just curl up and uh, be in the corner or can we do something? That is what I'm going to talk about for the remaining uh, uh, two sessions of uh, this afternoon. So, actually, if you really think about it, it doesn't matter, as I mentioned, whether you can put a name to something as cheap. What is really interesting to me, at least in the theory of biology, is to understand First of all, uh, understanding biology is a lot more difficult than just going to the group and uh, learning about it. You can certainly uh, find clusters within that, but you can't really uh, go much beyond that. And finding clusters is perhaps just the beginning of doing some interesting biology. So the two examples that I'm going to talk about uh, start off where group biologists are going to learn about it. studying this uh, group mainly because of the tremendous difference between the mimicry that you see here and there's quite a few interesting problems to address from how communities are formed to how sex is now going on in this history to show the progression of the uh, females which make them different and uh, what forms of phylacteries and what kind of like differentials might happen between one of them and the other and that is one of the main so we 
this question of how to be greenborn, how to be converted to divergent, I think it's very important. Um, and I do think that so what are the features that are required to be actually greenborn or can it be greenborn? Can you confirm the statement or not? So a few years ago, I started thinking if I really want to do this for some reason or I want to think that you know, the media I should really get one well developed by now. If you don't know that people in relationship and I'm for example uh, looking at uh, divergence between taxa and reproductive isolation for example and what is the notion of uh, mating systems for different uh, kinds of things and I really cannot do this well unless I know the species of the individuals. So this is where we started and this is a tapping group to study that. This is the This is where you have uh, these family of insects, butterfly, and we have, I've shown here a world of very broad categories of uh, birds in the area that we looked at, and this is again uh, what I was uh, uh, talking about this a bit earlier, bird nests, and this is what uh, we started looking at. So for each region that we looked at, this is the number of endemic species uh, that we get there. So So 
Because the people just hate this. But they have absolutely no information on what's happening in the organization. All you do is go out, get samples, look at molecular variation, and then that gives you some algorithm, and it defines clusters. So there's really no biology involved in this. The only biology involved is the people who look at it and have to do this. They have looked at all the variation that is out there, and it just doesn't seem to be very important to them. They don't do it that way. So the idea is that you look at variation, basically looks at all the variation from the sample and then tries to move it in this order uh, trying to get that uh, good year and then comes up with one cluster that's the thing so that is there are different ways of doing that which is really useful for the company and that more species we can get into the business if we can be able to go into the cluster species and then do that so this is what we did this is the entire biology of that out to make this more targeting so that's one nice thing so differentiation to a very more targeted way of problem and as I mentioned the words I like is very different in studying the eukaryotes uh, like some of the words you saw the fish that are very powerful for collecting anybody who collects a stone or who collects a rock from the earth will be the most useful for this so there are very few unique variations that we can do for this uh, at least certainly not
this is what I think is biological interest in this particular case, uh, irrespective of what the cause of this was. So this is post-end sequence divergence between sister species legs, and these are known factors for the uh, frequency of the uh, time cycle. So Macaron means there is that one species called Macaron, and there is a whole chain of uh, phyletic sister blades, which are the different names of them. So between Macaron and that sister blade, we have certain parameters. And what this means is uh, oh, sorry. So between uh, Macaron, for example, there are multiple ones which form the homophylogic group, and this is where you uh, are comparing these sister blades. And what you are comparing here is Nebulas and Chaos are each other's uh, frequencies of the phylogenetic uh, group, so this is what we are trying to show. So when you look at that, what you see is a fairly gradual drop in uh, phylogenetic group. So this is, this is the point of the point of the contact of the time cycle. So this is what was this time we are talking about. So what you see is that across this entire phylogeny, among these three, four species, you have divergence between groups, between sister blades, going all the way from a constant of 0.3 to that time of constant of 0.4. Okay, this may be going down. Maybe this is slight jump, uh, one percent or two percent of the time of contact of species. This is hardly a drop. This is hardly a drop. With respect to the sister species, this is going up. Okay, so there is no step. So these 
colors correspond to the rain in the sun. But within the purple areas, you can see that there are lots of islands. And each one of these islands is actually covered with different types of rain within that uh, area. So what you see here is that there have been what we call dispersals and flag dispersals across all these different parts of the spring. And it seems like when these particles disperse, they become isolated and those things get mixed up with the rest of the surrounding surface. And when they become isolated, they start to diverge. Now, whether that's happening at dust section or not, we don't know. But because, you know, usually in the spring, you can assume that most of this land will have seen up to that just because of the if that is true, what you see is that there is a lot of dispersal across these, and as things get dispersed, they start diverging. So if you look at uh, the uh, divergence here, oh sorry, earlier I said 20 million years, I was wrong, this is about 12 million years. So across 12 million years, you know, you do not see much uh, big breaks between these different dispersals. So here to be happening is that you have these dispersals and flag dispersals across key parts of big barriers, and that itself is driving these uh, divergence here. And then if you look at uh, each subregion, it seems like uh, you have a fairly gradual uh, differentiation, but for some key regions, differentiation seems to be happening at different times, which may have to do with the uh, dispersals in those areas. Going back to what we were mentioning just a little bit before, and I mentioned this to Windows because we sort of uh, mimicry these patterns or pointed these patterns here. So these are four times two big million year rounds. So that you see there, it's just two, and this is just showing what is the mimicry type we have played with in this particular region. So this is what we are working on right now. So using that color, we get to identify this particular button. But when we made it, irrespective of whether there are islands or not, right? So when you do look at uh, species pairs, you will find cases where, on the whole, these unrelated genes, which are usually not related to that one itself, may work gradually. But because some things are going to be more dynamic than others, because we know everybody knows about 
so many ways to Sorry. 
was in my wedding place and not showing the plate that was in the room. You see, if you look at my wedding person on my wedding plates, it is the plate that was in the room. If you look at species of big islands, small mainland ones, and small islands, the analogs are the same. The plate is the same. The analogs are the same. Okay. So there is nothing ecological that will look for in the present moment. You can see the same thing here in Paris. You go in there, you see more species and more species of plates. And that would expect the So our speciation rates are limited and by dispersal isolation we expect them to have biophilic only complex landscape. Okay. But now that we have seen this, if you know any other things that may may have happened, there's no doubt it's not our fault. We can only blame it on the biological factors that are happening. Okay, so I will talk about another example, but we'll take a break before we go to talk about that example. But I will tell you with Flagship examples which are actually based on thought about the fundamental concepts of extremely complex ecosystems. Okay, so that's the second example. I think uh, the point I wanted to make earlier in response to Ravi's comment is something that I think since uh, I think when did this come in? Maybe 2045 or so. So maybe we can finish all of this stuff. But I will just make the, the last point which is. Since you wanted general patterns and gen generality, what if I give you not general, then it's not science. Okay, so this is something that we have heard about. This is food for thought. I don't have to discuss it at length. I just want to take a break. Can you think of absolute universal meaning of food for thought? extremely diverse phenomena, right? So physicists have told us for hundreds of years that there is only one Earth, or is a theory for that. And that might actually work out for really simple phenomena. When you're dealing with biological world like what we have here, we have everything from as I said, our virus, which for a long time people argued whether there is a living, right? Many people still strongly believe that viruses are not something like that all the way to very complicated molecules like plants or cyclones like that I've mentioned and all the ecological dynamics that we can see in food for thought. So you know that it's food for thought, right? And various studies have proven there are different patterns of evolution across the different species. Should we actually expect one thing to be universal? Now some evolution biologists 